So God takes them out here into the desert. This is the promised land. 70% of the promised land looks like that. But he says, I want you to come out here and I need for you to do something. I need you to come out here and build a sanctuary. I want you to, to create a space for me that I can come and dwell in it. But how do you take just free slaves, unqualified, that have no resources, how do you create a cathedral for God? Have you ever felt unqualified? God's like, hey, I'm going to send you to Africa. Hoorah. Yay. Uh, I don't know the culture. How? But God says, no, I need, you, I need you to come out here and build a sanctuary. The rabbis ask an interesting question. They say, what would prevent God from dwelling in this sanctuary that he built? And they say, well, what about sin? Well, on their wedding night at Mount Sinai, they kind of had an adulterous affair with the golden calf. God still did it. They didn't have a land yet. God's like, that's not a problem. We'll just create a movable tent. It's an interesting question. What would have prevented God from filling it? Now, in this concept, there's one thing that we keep overlooking. God. God will always provide for his will to be accomplished. And you begin to think of what would God need for them to be able to do this? I came up with three fairly simple things. I only need a ton or so of gold, three and three quarter tons of silver, two and a half tons of bronze, about a billion dollars worth. You're in the desert, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. The lottery's getting big enough now, it's gonna solve it. <laughs> Taxes might take a lot of it. How in the world are these unqualified, just freed slaves going to do this? You wanna talk about a big vision. So, he needs a world power. Where are you gonna get that amount of resources without a world power? I need some place that they're gonna gather the world's resources, where their temples are lined with gold, where their houses have all the gems and light, anything you possibly need, fine linens, everything. I need a world power that they're able to get resources from. God's like, that's fine. Okay, when is this? This is going to be about 1500 BC. Therefore, let me back up 2000 years before that. Okay, the Egyptian dynasty. And the Egyptian dynasty begins and gathers all these resources. And you realize how much God is sitting back in time. He doesn't just need a world power. He needs a re religion that looks at gift giving as a way to appease the gods. Do you know in Egyptian mythology and Egyptian records, there is not one animal sacrifice to the gods? Most other ones, it's always offering some sort of life. But in Egypt, for some reason, they thought it would be smart to give the gods, I don't know, gold, silver, fine linens. If we have a people that think a way to appease the gods is to give them our wealth, the God's like, oh. During the night, Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, up, leave my people, you and the Israelites, go, Avodah the Lord. Take your flocks and herds and also bless me. The Egyptians urged the people to hurry and leave the country, for otherwise they said we will die. So the people took their dough before the yeast was added and carried on their shoulders in kneading troughs wrapped in clothing. And the Israelites did as Moses instructed and asked the Egyptians for articles of silver and gold and for clothing. The Lord had made the Egyptians favorably disposed towards the people and they gave them what they asked for. Why? Because the people, the Egyptians believed, if we can give the God that is angry, think of the plagues, if we can give them an offering, he'll be appeased. And they plundered Egypt. Not just that, I'm going to need a road. I'm going to need a highway where all of the world's goods intersect. I need the Silk Road to bring all these luxuries, fine linens that we need for this place, all the way out of China and in Europe. I need that to intersect across the inside road because I need to have my incense for the altars. I need that to crisscross. I don't know. Let's put that somewhere in the middle of the Sinai Peninsula, just where these children of Israel are building a tabernacle so they can buy what they need. And God's like, world power, got it. World religion where they offer gifts to the gods, got it. Silk Road, Incense Road, right where we need it, absolutely. And the people are going, is God moving or not? We ask that question all the time. What is God doing for us? He's like, I don't know, the last 2,000 years, I kind of set this kingdom up for you. I had a road right where you needed it. But we don't see it because we're ex-slaves coming out of Egypt. And God's like, I've got so much for you. 
I asked the question earlier that the rabbis asked, what would prevent God from filling the space? What would prevent God from dwelling in the tabernacle? And they only could come up with one answer if they never build it. God has one request. He's like, if you create a space, I'll fill it. We now have to take everything that God has given us and say, okay, God, we're going to step back. We're going to prepare a place. Set a, set a place the time, the energy, the effort, money. He's got that. It's not a problem. Set a part of a little bit of our lives and say, okay, we're going to create a space because we know if we create this space, he will fill it. The Lord is my strength and song. He's become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him a habitation. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. Let's stand. Father God, thank you so much for your blessings. We don't deserve it. We're just slaves out of Egypt. But you've orchestrated in our lives miracles upon miracles, things that we can't comprehend. And right now, we just dedicate it back to you. Help us to get out of the way. Help us to just to create a space here in Summitville where you come and dwell in it. That the fire of God will be felt throughout the community and we can worship you, worship you out of a heart of love because we are built and you are the foundation, the cornerstone of what we do in Messiah's name.